we're here at the uh, butterfly, monarch butterfly sanctuary. This is on the border of the state of Michoacan and the state of Mexico. There's a, an area where monarch butterflies, we used to live in Santa Barbara, they have a, uh, a butterfly sanctuary area too. And I believe some of these butterflies actually end up over there. So we came here to go check it out. We're at pretty high elevation. This is actually 10,000 feet in elevation. So the temperature is kind of cold compared to places we've been recently, but um, it's actually kind of nice because, you know, we've been we're really worried about the hot weather. So now finally it's a uh, high enough elevation. It's cooled down a little bit. But as we continue going east towards the Yucatan Peninsula, it's definitely gonna get hot again. So today, hopefully we'll see some butterflies. Most of them have already left. There's just very few. So, fingers crossed, we'll see some. So during the really peak season, this place is packed full of people. Right now, there's nobody here. We're the only people here. And it's because this place is basically closed down. And right now, there's uh, not even somebody selling tickets at the window. But when we showed up, they still said we had to pay. And this, uh, this guy here, Nico, he's a kind of a guide. He can walk with you and show you stuff. He walked with us a little bit yesterday just to go see a viewpoint and then we came back it was too late we weren't going to make it all the way out to the butterfly field so we came back we said okay we'll come in the morning we'll do to we'll try it again so this morning we came back and then uh yeah this is when they said normally it's 80 pesos a person when this place is in like full operational mode but right now because we're on the end of the season we're basically during the off season practically. It's almost April. It is uh, still 50 pesos a person. So for the five of us, we're paying 250 pesos for this walk. And since we have Nico as our guide, we'll tip him a little bit too. We'll give him like 100 pesos. So in all, it'll be about 350, total about 300 pesos to do this for us, five people. But we did also get the camp for free, so. Sí. Solo vino. Sí. Yeah. Vamos a ir al Zacatonal. Ajá. Zacatonal. Ahí está la vista. Sí. Y aquí está otro de Peña Blanca. Ah, Peña Blanca, sí. Aquí está arriba. Okay. Y. Ah, la casa de japoneses. Japoneses está muy. Ah, okay, okay. Muy lejos. Sí, pero si si gustan yo los llevo. Muy lejos para nosotros. Pues, un <laughs> no? kilómetro. Un kilómetro. Ok. So we're just seeing some like single butterflies here and there. They're kind of just stragglers that maybe just got too old or decided to not go on with the migration or maybe they got lost, got distracted. I don't know what the deal is, how it works with the butterflies and their migration. Normally during the high season, there are millions everywhere. 
but there are also millions of people. Okay, perhaps not millions, but at least hundreds of people. You go with what you got. We're enjoying this very private, very uh, tranquil hike in the trees, even though we don't get to see a lot of butterflies. It's still very beautiful though. Mexico is just full of all different types of terrains. Beaches, deserts, mountains, volcanoes, and then forests like this. So if you guys were able to come out here, maybe in the shoulder season, maybe at the beginning or at the end of the season where there's not a lot of people to kind of follow along on the hike, I highly recommend going with a tour guide because he knows where everything is and there can be a lot of side trails that go off and you might get lost in here. So I think getting a guide to go with you is definitely worth it. He doesn't actually charge anything to be a guide, but he does expect a tip. So, you know, tip him whatever you got. 50, 100 pesos for basically like an hour of his time, or maybe more, depending on how busy he is. Okay, so we went up here to go to see a viewpoint. We came back down, now we're at Peña Blanca. We're gonna go to that colony. Well, this is where they would be a couple of weeks ago. We're in the colony now, but just as we expected, we're seeing very, very few. But it makes sense that they would be here because this is where all the flowers are. They're everywhere, the wings are everywhere. Yes. There must have been so many here for these corpses to be everywhere. Hmm? Oh yeah, so people had to leave them here. Because even the dead ones you're supposed to leave behind. Huh? It's just a rule. Look at it's been eaten by birds. Oh there's a hot spot for this is a, a this is a male. That area is probably eight thousand feet above sea level. No, we're like 10,000 feet. Well, we're almost back. That was a pretty long hike. If I have to guess, I would say it was probably between four, three to four miles maybe. Maybe a little bit more. But what's your guess, Luca? 3.4. All right, Luca guesses 3.4. We saw maybe, I say less than 10 butterflies overall, but we saw hundreds of dead ones on the ground. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them come here every year. And each of them only live about a month. And their trip from here, their migration going north from here, takes about three to four months. And they go somewhere up in Canada, as you can do the math, the ones that leave here don't make it there. They actually have multiple generations of butterflies for these migrations. And it's, uh, it's about four generations by the time they make it all the way up to Canada, which is pretty amazing. I mean, I don't really know why they come here and why they don't just go to a closer place, but it's what they do. It's the animal kingdom. It does incredible things. We made it. All right, so we're walking back to the car, and then you, uh, <clears throat> right here at the entrance, there's a whole bunch of these shops where they sell different arts and crafts. Some of them sell some food, but as you can see, it's so late in the season now, nobody's here, so they're all closed, basically. But a couple of them, they're just kind of hanging around here, and they saw us come in yesterday, and they opened up for us. 
So we got a little keychain that's pretty cool. And then we got something to drink from one of the shops just to help out the local businesses a little bit. I will say, don't come late like we did unless you just want to do a nice hike with no people. But keep in mind that you, you're going to see very, very few butterflies if you come out of season. Hungry? We're supposed to feed you. <laughs> you know where the cat food is, huh? Yeah? I think this is because you fed the kitty this morning. Probably. And knows this is where the food comes from now. Maybe. Yeah. That's a very pretty eyes. It matches your shirt. <laughs> Our little clubhouse. And has a whole kitchen to make us food. Four burners. Four burners. No, eight burners. Oh yeah, eight burners. Chiliculus. Two bridges. I have an itch under my eye. My white eye. You need help? Coffee? 